Good morning. Yes. Okay. Good morning. It is 7.05 a.m. on Monday, August 23rd, 2021. I'm Christiana Ellis and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So I started my morning by becoming... I was about to say angry, but that's overstating it. It's not really angry. It's like moderately, slightly com comically irritated about movie stuff on Twitter, you see. And it started because it's, you know, a simple check of Twitter uh, revealed for me a promoted tweet from Apple TV Plus that was just suggesting that they have a lot of things on Apple TV Plus to watch, but the thing that irritated me was that part of their little thing is um, uh, it, it, it was making like a sentence out of the titles of three different things, and I don't remember the first one, but the, the second two were Lost and The Abyss because they were trying to say, like, don't get lost in an abyss of unwatchable TV or something like that. I was something to that effect. Um, but they were using the logos from Lost, the TV show, and The Abyss, the movie, uh, as little promotional things. But here's why, like, that by itself doesn't irritate me. But what does catch my eye is using The Abyss, because I'm thinking, oh my god, the Abyss is one of those movies, bizarrely, like True Lies, that is somewhat inexplicably in, unavailable on to watch in almost any context, unless you own a uh, now out of print DVD or laser disc. Um, you can't watch it properly because even if you own that DVD, it's not anamorphic widescreen. So if you try to watch, like, any currently available version of The Abyss on your modern TV, it will be the 4x3 aspect ratio letterboxed. So you'll be watching your movie on a, like, if you imagine this frame of my video is your TV, you'll be watching um, your movie... Yeah. That's harder to orient than I would have expected in a little box like that. Um, and the reason for that, apparently, to hear some people tell it, all that's necessary is for James Cameron to just sit down with the new high-definition um, transfer and just say, yep, that looks good, print it. And that's all that it takes. But he has not done that for years. And it is so hard to watch The Abyss, much less the dramatically superior director's cut. You can watch the theatrical cut in that state by paying for it on some sources. But it's like there's no way to watch it properly anymore. And it's this thing that's been dragging on for years now. And it's irritating. And so I see on Apple TV Plus this promoted tweet. <gasps> The Abyss, do they, have, do they have something that I have not heard about? Go to the Apple TV Plus, uh, which I do subscribe to, check it out. No, they don't have that movie. It's so, what, what, it, it's just for the joke then? Mm. And then that was just had me in a Twitter fighty mood. And so when I caught another, there was a tweet talking about uh, the original tweet was talking about the idea of red flag movies and the examples they gave were Fight Club and Joker. Uh, and they were, the original tweet was trying to talk about like, okay, we know about red flag movies, but what about green flag movies? But of course, the, uh, very predictably, the, the huge number of replies are all about what, are you saying that liking Fight Club makes me a bad person? Well, fuck you. Uh, you know what? I'm going to... I wish I hadn't just used the F word right there. Anyway, it's... Um, you know, I think it's fine. Um, you guys know th these videos aren't for kids. But even still, like, I'm just trying to... Nah, I, I, I regret how aggressive that came across even in just... For, 
replying as in character as one of these people. Um, because, of course, in case it's not clear, the original tweet or the, even the idea of saying that Fight Club is a red flag movie is not about saying anyone who likes it is automatically a bad person. Of course not. But that movie has certainly been appropriated by a certain subculture of people who do not fully appreciate the film's full message and just think that the masculinity on display uh, by uh, Tyler Durden is cool and awesome and should be emulated. And I think it's a fair criticism of the movie that even though its point is that you shouldn't do that, nonetheless, it has uh, failed to convince a lot of its own fans of that. Um, and so, but uh, what ha was amazing to me in that Twitter conversation is just how many people are taking this original tweet, interpreting it in a very extreme way, and then using that to proclaim uh, that no one is allowed to have nuance in anything anymore. And their argument being like, it's okay to, it, you should be able to have nuance where a movie is about an anti-hero and you can appreciate it without thinking that that anti-hero is a good person or that they should be emulated. And what about nuance? At the same time that they're denying that allowance for new, nuance to the original tweet itself. I'm, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get some caffeine and um, try to do something more calm <laughs> before I get the start to the day. So uh, I will leave it there and I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.